Hey you, welcome back to the channel. And guys, today I want to talk about is BitTube the best cryptocurrency investment? And first off, let me just start off by saying that um, the opinions and views expressed in this video is not financial advice, it's just an opinion. You have to do your own due diligence and research. And thus the question is being asked, is this the best investment in cryptocurrency? So if you're like me, you probably didn't even know what BitTube was uh, for a long time. And maybe some of you, this might be your first time hearing about it or uh, you're not familiar with it. But just like the name suggests, it's um, uh, it's uh, similar to YouTube. Um, and so it's using like a similar YouTube model and, and, and various things like that. But uh, let's let's explore this a little bit and let's let's see some of the reasoning behind why it to me it, it even falls under this this question category. Right. So as we look at the total supply of BitTube. The total supply is 82,110,735 tokens. The market cap of um, uh, BitTube is $2,640,658. Volume over the last 24 hours, $48,798. Almost non-existent volume, right? So you look at this and you go, well, um, um, it doesn't look that impressive. It's ranked number 635 on coin market cap. However, if we look at these numbers again, guys, $2 million. Now, if you visit BitTube's um, platform, you will find out that it has a great user-friendly website looks exactly like YouTube. If you can use YouTube, if you like the YouTube layout and feel, BitTube almost has that exact same layout, right? So first, before we really look into even putting it in this question category, you know, or even considering it, looking at the stats so far, which don't look that impressive, let's ask the question, what makes a good cryptocurrency investment in other words what would you what would you all consider to be a good reason to invest in cryptocurrency so my my first uh, my my first thought process in this would be is it something that has value to people that people are going to use and if so why like why would i use cryptocurrency guys if you were going to try to sell me on using cryptocurrency, uh, you should consider that I live in the West. I live in the United States of America. I use MasterCard. I use Visa. Um, my, the banks that I use are stable. And so the point I'm making, guys, is that the money, the monetary system that I'm under now in the United States, uh, you know, no, no matter um, how much many of us can see many issues in it and many problems in it, at the end of the day, it still runs the world. People still use it without issues, without problems. And there isn't really a sense of urgency in the West at this point to, uh, to adapt cryptocurrency that's just the facts guys is you know when your families come home at night when we go through the course of events throughout the day uh i i'm i'm not running up against people who are telling me things like um you know um it's 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 dire that uh i find some other way to transact money today <laughs> you know that's just not that's just not the case where i live now I do know that other parts of the world, it is very much the case as they suffer from hyperinflation. 
And these are very important use cases to cryptocurrency because obviously so. Obviously, if you go out and you work and you're paid in uh, uh, money that uh, 24 hours later, 90% of its value is gone. That's going to be reason for concern, immediate concern, urgency. And so one issue and one problem I'm finding in cryptocurrency when it when it comes to considering what's good investment and what's going to be a good token to invest in um, is this type of, um, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, what I might kind of consider the code of cryptocurrency. And that's kind of the idealism, the idealist about, you know, cryptocurrency and, and what it what it should be doing. And maybe that that idea and those viewpoints are uh, will be the case in years to come. And, 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 you know, and I'm sure that's part of that. But the point I'm trying to make, guys, is the the, the reality of the world we live in now uh, in many parts of the world um is their monetary system is still working um and it's working to a point where it's stable enough for people not to want to act and so what what would be required in a case like that would be a message of use and urgency that is needed today uh, and, um, you know, that's pretty much what it comes to guys. That's why the cryptocurrency pool is so low right now. That's why people aren't adopting over so quickly because it's just no urgency to do so right at this point in time. So let, let's, let's move over to, to, to some other use cases that might cause people to, uh, adapt quicker. And we're going to deal with I'm going to stay in the, in the uh, areas of stable economies. Then I'm going to. So because we, we need to to uh, be distinct about these demographics as well, because sometimes people will create use cases for cryptocurrency, but they won't uh, pinpoint good use uh, demographic wise who's using it. Right. And who, who would have to use it. So. We also have to consider that. So let's stay in, 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 in more stable economies for a moment now and try to find some other reasons. So the next reason I think would be something like privacy. Right. So who's going to be really uh, um, uh, who's going to be really interested in the privacy of their money and moving it and various things like that? Many, many of us going to be interested in that to a to a great degree. But who's. Who's going to where's a lot of urgency going to come in for that? And that's probably going to be and these are going to be kind of, you know, not good examples, but probably true examples. It's going to probably be something like gambling, prostitution and drugs. <laughs> you know, these are transactions that you, people don't have a sense of urgency for people not to know about. Right. Uh, you know, if, if, if you're, um, doing some type of, uh, activity you want to hide, um, if it's to do with some type of sexual activity, websites, webcam girls, porn sites that require use of, uh, spend the money, um, you know, some people would want those transactions to be private. So there would be a use case in that, but we have to look at, that's a demographic situation. That's a demographic situation that's going to go into um, a particular set of people, right? That are that are doing that, and so that's not going to serve the masses of people as far as urgency and need. So, what else? What what else could we look at that's going to serve everybody? Because the examples we've given so far about good investments in cryptocurrencies, one good case we came up with was hyperinflation. You know, where people are forced into using black market type activity just to get food and bread because their currency is no good. And, uh, um, it, 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 you know, they need to transact commerce and business. And the only way they're going to be able to do that uh, in a hyper uh, land is through probably some kind of barter system or if they had some type of decentralized currency like what you, you get with Bitcoin and, and many, of, many of these other cryptocurrencies. 
So then we move back to where it's stable at and where people's banking system and money and is, is pretty stable. People are eat, eating, so there's no need for revolution or revolt of blood in the streets. And you get to activities that require a great deal of privacy, right? And so that's a special demographic, you know. And uh, I'm, again, I'm not saying that people, uh, a lot of people wouldn't find use in this, but what I found that in the best investments comes urgency, right? The question is, where's that urgency in that that's fueling people to, to do this? So what would be the next thing that would probably fuel use of a cryptocurrency in a way that people would, um, a, a large demographic of people could participate and not be um, uh, 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 categorized out due to the fact they either don't really need to use it or the reasons it's being used for doesn't apply to them. Well, what comes to mind to me would be things like entertainment and education, right? When you think about entertainment and education, uh, how, like who uses that? Doesn't everybody use entertainment and education? And um, and so uh, let's look at why you would even need cryptocurrency in that. Well, in certain forms of entertainment, let's take YouTube, for example, <laughs> uh, with a similar sound a bit to with, with YouTube. I watch a lot of YouTube. A lot of people I know are entertained on YouTube. It's part social media site. So they're on there. They're using it. Billions of people use it youtube so that shows a great demand for youtube right there and youtube covers everything from education to entertainment to awareness and it also it's because especially when it, in the education area audio visual is probably without a doubt the best way to learn right and so you can you can pick all that up off of, you know, certain content on on over video media and, and various things like that. So th these are areas where it's going to be a sense of urgency and demand where I need to use this. I need to come home and turn YouTube on and watch YouTube every day. Uh, there is a great demand for that with me. So. Where's where, why would I need to use a cryptocurrency in something like YouTube or something like that? Well, the problem with or what's becoming a big issue with areas like YouTube is censorship. Uh, and because, again, it is really a social network, too, at its essence, uh, the idea that I contribute to your network, uh, but I'm not sharing in the value that I'm putting forth, right? And, you know, so in that, in that regard and in that sense, what's going to happen is you're going to have these private entities that control everything that happens in that network through their terms of service and various things like that. And so you would need something like a cryptocurrency in the social media world that's that's big business right now and, and, and entertainment and demand that we need. You would need something like that to be decentralized, not only from the content area, but also decentralized in the monetary policy area. So in that in that regard, because I need entertainment, I need education, audio visual is the best way to learn audio visual uh, you know in that in that regard so many people use these type uh, things there's the demand uh i think that that would be uh a, a very good use case and in, 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 in the cryptocurrency where i think it would be a good investment in my opinion so let, let's look at bit like bit two million dollar market cap let's think about that now we know that YouTube's billions make has billions is worth billions upon billions of dollars, right? And so, um, a company like or a um, it's a, a situation like BitTube that is in that same area, um, uh, and solving 
issues in that area that the uh, most successful part of that industry is not. Uh, it's very easy for me to come to the conclusion that they will be able to grow and get a part of that market share. And right now, they only have like $2 million of that. I mean, if we look at the historical data of BitTube, uh, it's been as high as 30 cents a coin, which, trans, which, which basically means that it's... It's already reached, and it hasn't been out that long. It's already reached a, a market cap of about twenty-six million dollars, right? Uh, about ten times what it is today. And even if it was sitting at twenty-six million dollars, how many <laughs> uh, guys? How many uh, cryptocurrencies? The worst of the worst coins, coins what, what we actually refer to as shit coins. <laughs> How many of them have a market cap of $26 million and higher? And, um, you know, some other good things about um, BitTube, you know, as I've, I've received some comments about BitTube about, well, is this, this token seems valueless in that. Uh, where do you trade it? I can't seem to find. Well, BitTube has been trading on Bittrex, one of the biggest exchanges, that one of the ones I use the most. And they're sitting there. And, and I think the reason why people might not know they're sitting there because uh, of the abbreviation of their token. It's, I think it's abbreviated like TubeCoin or something like that. So they might be looking for another abbreviation. But it is on Bittrex. And you can see as early as uh, within this same month, uh, BitTube's value has been already in, in the month of August alone, it's been twice the value is at now. But, you know, again, what you would have to consider and look at is the market capitalization. How much value do you think a platform like BitTube can offer over into not just the crypto space, but the entire globe because of the entire world because the thing is this uh when you visit the bittube site bittube is laid out just like youtube so let's let's consider that for a moment if bittube is laid out just like youtube um that means that everybody who uses YouTube is probably going to have no problem using BitTube. And how many people use YouTube? So let's also consider another portion of the idea of a good investment in cryptocurrency that I think many of us agree will be important, and that's mass adoption. So a lot of people say, well, everybody talks about mass adoption. Everybody says that they're fit for mass adoption. But in the reality of mass adoption, how many people, how many cryptocurrencies are have that you can really look at and say uh, has really had an impact on the rest of the world as far as mass adoption with the exception of maybe Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the only thing, only cryptocurrency you really ever hear about in the news, period. And it's been around for about 10 years. And even in that, Bitcoin only has about 30 million wallets, even though it's on CNBC, it's on TV all the time. So this the idea of mass adoption, uh, uh, although being a super very important factor in what makes a coin worth, I think, in my opinion, a good investment and why you should be investing in it. With that considered, besides Bitcoin, they're about the only people, only coin that has really even grabbed the attention of the global market. Now, and a reason, I, and I, and, and one of the major reasons I think that is because a lot of 
people just don't know what to do with it. It's more like, what am I going to do with this? Like, what, what do I going to do with this? But think about that in re- relation to bit two. What can they do with bit two? Well, they can do everything they do on YouTube, right? So they can participate. They have a use case. And when I say use case, we're talking about a an overall demographic. We're not talking about people who uh, have hyperinflated currency. We're not talking about, um, you know, people who um, want, something to move faster a transaction to go faster we want to do a billion transactions a second only for people not to even still have a reason to use their token um and so with this these people can participate do the things that they have a need to do have a use to do have a demand to do and can easily understand it because also If you're going to we're going to add mass adoption into it being a good case for use and a good reason to invest in a token. You got to have a very easy interface to get so many people using your token and over. It's got to be very user friendly. So. For something to be very user friendly. Let's look at this scenario. Wouldn't it be much easier just for them to. (laughs) to use something uh, as far as layout that they've already been using for like the last uh, 20 years, (laughs) you know, you know, which is, you know, YouTube, you know, when it's come on, come on a scene, you know, in the early 2000s or what have you. And, you know, wouldn't that be so much easier for mass adoption? So, so, do I think BitTube is a good investment? In my opinion, or is it the best investment? I I think it possibly could be simply because the layout is everybody uses YouTube and everybody understands everybody has a reason to use it. And, uh, you know, to give that to people and give them more features to pay them for watching these videos when they watch a gazillion of them a day. Yeah, I I think it makes perfect sense. Um, And, you know, another thing I want to say this real quick and I'm going to get out of here. But another issue that happens, I see a lot in technology in the cryptocurrency space is that, you know, in relation to should I invest in this token and and why should I and what are the dangers of investing in it? Will it always be performing at a certain level and uh, and this, that, and the other? Well, with technology, I found in the cryptocurrency, technology moves fast. So somebody creates something, then somebody comes along and goes, well, I see where you've created this and everything works great with that. But if only you would tweak this or do that, it would be so much better. So what generally happens next is, the entity that's created this technology and came out the gate first with it, it's dragging, it's dragging ass. <laughs> and the impatient uh, 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 endeavors to push technology on forward, to heighten it, to move it to the next level, to lift the spirit of cryptocurrency what happens people start to fork off they create this entity that does everything that the people wants it to do now the the prior uh cryptocurrency coin has become obsolete because either they were too slow or they didn't have the technology or they didn't have the vision to see what this other group has seen so the so the the point i'm making is in in that too you're going to have this technology race and you're going to have this Who comes out the gate first with this? Who does it better? And who manages to brand it well enough to keep the lead, to keep the uh, participants, to keep the community? And so BitTube could have that problem or it could not have that problem. It it all is going to depend on, um, you know, how they come out the gate, how they do, how they, you know, how they, how they, 
execute their plans. And uh, right now they aren't really set to do any major marketing on this until 2019, which is right around the corner. But I think Bit2 is looking great so far. So unless something like that happens, I can see them grabbing a pretty good market share of, of some of the money over at YouTube, which is a lot. Especially with everything going on, on with um, censorship, the, the ad revenues, and uh, you know, and so uh, all that's going to be important. And there are there are a lot of other video cryptocurrency sites. Bit two is not unique in that, but they are seemingly to me unique in this idea of POV or proof of viewing. Uh, and so this is going to be all interesting to watch and, and see unfold. But Bit two to me has a big jump out of the gate. They're already on Bitrex, a major exchange. Uh, they they have a great awesome layout, and so uh, I, for me it's a it's a no brainer. It's a good it's a good token, but I do advise you to do your own research to can be mindful and consider what cryptocurrency is trying to achieve and how we see that happening exactly. So uh, guys, that's what I want to say about BitTube. Um, uh, guys, if you like content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, take care.